Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my Sagittarius friends and friends of Sagittarius. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot. And hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. So Sagittarius, I missed you guys. Thank you for your patience as I'm getting back on track here. Um, I love you. I hope you're doing well. So Sagittarius, we'll look at what came through in meditation here. There were a few oracle cards that were pulled. We'll talk about and then get into your tarot messages as we do. So first thing that came through for you, Sagittarius, was um, you're going to feel like a million bucks. <laughs> so I love to see that. Um, and with the message that's come through, I do, I am getting this, or I'm getting the message that um, there might be a little bit of a, a shift of focus that is being requested right now in order to move you towards feeling like a million bucks. Okay. Um, the next thing that came through was the waves of time this time. And, and asking for some clarification on that, like something about um, a cycle or a process, something that has been repetitive that's happened in the past multiple times, something about being able to come back and re-experience something. Um, to re-experience is the explanation that I was given. And then um, they also said uh, Phoenix tier. So... This is interesting because when that came through, my first thought on that was, um, like in Harry Potter, um, the Phoenix tear, I mean, in mythology, the Phoenix tear is extremely healing. So, um, I get this concept of like being able to go back and re-experience something or to like master something that deserves some healing in your history. The, the really interesting thing about that part, when I did Google it just to, to double check, um, what actually came up as the first many results for it was um, a phoenix tear apparently is something to do with um, like Rick Simpson oil. And I'm not encouraging any sort of um, like if things aren't legal, you know what I mean, where you are, then please uh, make your own choices. That's what I'm saying, okay? I'm not condoning any sort of behavior. But I found it interesting, Rick Simpson oil... Um, is a, a cannabis product <clears throat> that is supposed to help heal cancer. Um, and the Phoenix tier, I don't think is actually something that exists. I think it's like a hypothetical if we could get THC to a certain level or something like that is what it was saying. So I just found that interesting. I feel like there's one person that that's really specific to. And I'm not, like I said, encouraging anything to do or not do about that. I'm just saying that popped up and it stuck out to me. Okay. So moving forward here, the oracle cards that you guys got. So the castle, the self, and the shadow are what came through. So I'll show you here the castle and the self and the shadow. So with the castle here, um, the castle can symbolize like a fortress, something that both keeps you or anyone safe, but it can also um, keep things out. So... There is this um, delicate balance with the castle as far as knowing when to let things in or when to protect against. It was um, the tendency to hold possessions or position that project uh, accomplishment or achievement stood out to me in the book. So I'm kind of Sagittarius getting this feeling that there may be maybe you have a tendency to do this. And it's not a judgment from my end at all. I'm just telling you what's coming through here. There may be a request uh, as something is coming back as as far as a cycle goes, a request for you to maybe let go of where um, achievement or status is is important to you. And that's not to say that having items or or things you know that do make you feel achievement are wrong to have. I'm just getting um, a request to kind of redirect the importance of things that are going on inside of you inside Sagittarius. Um, the throne of power within is something that stood out about the castle as well. So with the self coming through here, and I like that, um, we've got pearls in both of the imagery. So the self, um, is the central container. And like the book says, it, uh, it does not judge or ostracize or separate any components of the self. Those are things that we tend to do. Um, especially as we start dealing with shadow work, <laughs> with the shadow coming in. That's something that we make a conscious choice to do. So there's something about bringing those things into balance. Um, 
witnessing and accepting new aspects of the self. So with these waves coming back around, like I said, I feel like there's an opportunity here for you guys to do something differently, to approach something differently. Yourself. Yourself. <laughs> so the shadow here coming through next. The shadow is the shadow. Those things that are very similar to the concept of the devil, those portions that we may sequester to the dark. Uh, the things that stood out in the book about this was, um, uh, no, it was said, uh, if you're thinking, no, anything but that, then you're touching the shadow. So this is just kind of an illumination to, if this is what you're going through, if this is what you're noticing with yourself, there's a reason. Keep examining that shadow. Don't, don't um, turn away from it. It's time to stop turning away from what is in the shadow. Um, the book also, so in the shadow, the, um, in the shadow of the gods are the very gods themselves. I liked that. So there seems to be something very important that has been in the shadow, a very crucial part of your identity, yourself, that you have been keeping locked away, maybe even from you. So it's feeling like this wave that's coming back around, it's time to um, make peace with that. And I actually like it with the shadow here in the book, they talk about the uh, shadow existing because of our pursuit for achievement or ascension, pursuing light. And it's, it's true, really. Um, so there is a call to find more balance, finding that shade of gray in the middle. Okay, so let's get into your tarot messages here, my Saggy friends. We're going to start here with the Fortuna deck. So what do we have for Sagittarius, please, Spirit? And huge shout out to my channel members, you guys, hello. Thank you for your love and support. If you're interested in being a channel member yourself, there's a join button right next to the subscribe. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video you can check out as well if you want. And while you're there, you can check out my website. I do have um, readings, personal readings that are open and available at this time. If you'd like to nab one of those, feel free. I'd love to help you out. So in your hopes here, hopes and dreams, you have five of pentacles. So five of pentacles is, um, I'm kind of getting like being in the dark. It's, it's being out side of something where you want to be um, could be abandonment i feel like this is talking about um it's nodding to these pieces or piece major piece that's in your shadow that's making you feel this way you're hoping to get away from this you're hoping to solve this to turn that page that's what i'm hearing you're hoping to move yourself from where it is dark to where it is light but i am getting like i said if things are dark right now, if you're working through the shadow, this isn't a time to run from that. That may be what you have done in the past. I'm kind of getting like with the um, the castle and the possessions thing. Maybe, and this isn't a judgment, um, maybe you've gotten into the habit of covering up whatever the shadow is trying to show you with purchasing things, going shopping. I don't know. Or um, throwing yourself into work working towards achievement or what appears to be achievement from the outside. Again, not a judgment, just um, that's what's coming through, okay? So this is the Untamed Tarot we'll work with next. Spirit, what do we have here for Sagittarius? And this is a general message, you guys, so please keep that in mind. You guys are extremely intelligent. You're powerful co-creators here as well. So please use your head, heart, and intuition to decipher which messages are for you and which are not. Feel free to check out your rising moon, Venus, any other major placements in your chart for a more complete picture of your story, okay? So this is your fear aversion. You have the magician here at the bottom. Um, I feel like kind of what I'm getting from this, because this is like manifestation, the will to create, having what you need to create. Um, Passion winning over desire or desire winning over passion. Um, I feel like the fear here is what I'm getting with those waves, like something you were working towards creating something in the past 
and maybe it blew up in your face. And so there's a fear to doing this again. Having the five of pentacles in your hope, wanting to get out of this dark space where you feel isolated or alone, uh, and the fear being to create, it's, I feel like you're kind of stuck, like you're stuck in the castle here. You don't know if it's best to stay isolated in the castle or to go out and make connections. You're scared to do both is kind of what I'm feeling. Okay, um, let's get into the main message here. So general energy, yeah. <laughs> fear, it's all about fear here. In the general energy to start, you have the moon, which is about our fears. It's about our subconscious realm. So touching on the shadow as well, looking into the subconscious realm, it feels, well, it seems to be highlighted quite well um, we're dealing with something in the shadow, you guys. There's an opportunity right now to, to readdress a component of yourself. What is it that you have been keeping in the dark? You may be aware of some of it or all of it. Maybe you aren't aware. Depends on how far, I guess, maybe you've tried to create distance between you and those components of yourself. But with the moon coming through, especially that eye there in the moon, it's time, it's time to see this. You're being asked to see this squarely. And I kind of, oh, interesting. With these dots coming down here too from the eye, I kind of think about that phoenix tear. There's something asking for some major healing here in the shadow. And I feel it's important to know, like, the closer we get to light, the longer our shadow is, right? So when we are being human, <laughs> when we're being human, um, we have those light and shadow sides of ourself. The goal is to strike a balance, is to strive for balance, which isn't a static position either. It is a sway. It's a dance. So if we try constantly to move towards the light or only the light, it accentuates our shadow. It makes those things appear bigger than they actually are, or it may illuminate parts of the shadow. So what I'm getting from that is um, like that may be what spiritual bypassing, interesting. That may be what you're trying to do with certain things. If, if there's stuff coming up in the shadow, um, you may be trying to heal it by ignoring it and moving closer towards the light. And this is actually the opposite direction that you want to go. You're being asked to look at this. Oh, and very interesting too, with the castle, there's the eye closed. So if you're, if you're stuck in the castle, you're not allowing yourself to leave this fortress, you have your eyes closed, but the eye is open there on, on the moon. You're being asked to look at this, you guys. Um, Nine of Pentacles comes through here next for your general. So Nine of Pentacles is your um, kind of act of the self here. This is your personal abundance. It is a, a bumper crop, a healthy crop. Hmm. A healthy abundance coming through for you. You're going to feel like a million bucks. Yeah, this is a glow up. This is available to you when you stop running from whatever those components are that you've been afraid of in your shadow. And this could be, you guys, like, you can run the gambit. Most of the time, they're pieces of ourselves that somebody told us weren't acceptable or we have told ourselves weren't acceptable based on pain, trauma, fear. So those pieces get put in the dark. They're not allowed to exist. Uh, and they're constantly crying out for validation because they do exist. And our job here, like the self is talking about, is to not judge those pieces, to not ostracize them, to not separate them. It is all a part of us. So um, it could be like, I'm thinking, getting like anything from singing, maybe somebody made you feel bad for the way you sing or dance, to um, habits, I don't know. Something that somebody made you feel bad for some weird uh, peccadillos or, or habits that you have. It's not anybody else's job to decide what is right or wrong for you, okay? But what I'm getting at this point is it's time to look at square in the face, okay? So the good stuff here for you, eight of keys comes through to start. Get some Gemini energy in there for you. Um, eight of keys is... I'm kind of getting, so this is the end of you avoiding, all right, of um, trying to re-circumnavigate, there we go, 
this issue or whatever is in the shadow here. The Eight of Keys is about being trapped. We're feeling trapped in our mind. We're not actually trapped, but uh, we can definitely feel that way if we're focusing only on that. So being in the good stuff here, I feel like this is, this is the end here for you. If you take it, you're being supported right now to let yourself out of this trap. You deserve to feel peace too, right? And we did just have Jupiter move into Gemini here as well. So um, I feel that you're being supported for um, if you have Gemini or wherever you do have Gemini in your chart, we do have every sign in our chart, you are experiencing expansion right now. So I encourage you to, to look that up with Jupiter moving into Gemini. Like this is, this is an opportunity for you to grow beyond these boundaries that have been placed upon you, that you've placed on yourself. Two of Pentacles comes through next. So Two of Pentacles is about balance, you guys. <laughs> it is, um, I feel like this is the balance we're talking about here. Finding that nice shade of gray there in the middle. Um, again, it's not a static position, but I'm, I'm getting that you're learning, you're learning how to dance. <laughs> You've been taking dance lessons, right? Maybe some of you literally but you're learning how to be more flexible with this dance of being a human between the light and the shadow. That is letting yourself out of this trap, allowing yourself this natural flow, this natural cycle. It's organic, you guys. Okay, let's keep moving forward here. So um, what is in the shadow here? What you don't see coming? Hidden messages, you have King of Elixirs to start. King of Cups. So um, this is uh, the notion of devotion to master the motion of your emotion ocean, right? As I say, the king of elixirs, um, there may be choppy waters around them. They could be in the center of this storm, but they are the center of that storm. They have found the center within themselves too. They allow things to flow without it affecting themselves physically, like we can't stop emotions from physically affecting us, but there is a form of control that comes when we allow emotions and experiences to flow through us. When we don't, they tend to get stuck somewhere in the shadow and the body. Sometimes they can present as illness. So what you don't see coming here is this opportunity to take your emotional mastery to the next level. So that does kind of make me feel um, there are opportunities or situations that are maybe happening right now, will be happening here soon, that are going to test your ability, your emotional temperance here, okay? Temperance, my, my Sagittarius friends. Let's see what else we have. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> temperance, oh my God. I do love my job, you guys, I do. <laughs> So temperance, as I was just saying, this is you. Totally. Thank you for the thank you for the validation spirit. So what you don't see coming, what's in the dark here, is an opportunity to um, to temper your emotions. Like I said, temperance here is bringing two polar opposites into congruency. It is bringing the those two into a nice. I mean, that doesn't really make sense art wise, but having the darker in the middle. But I think for example's sake, you get what I'm saying. There, um, and I don't feel like it's like a big event coming forward. It's just, um, this may be on your last nerve is what I hear. There may just be situations that are, uh, really getting to your shadow right now. The point of it is not to piss you off. It's not to bring, you know, the rage side of Sagittarius out. It's meant for you to release it to allow it to radiate outside of yourself here. Oh, hey, and there's even, a, I'm holding it up this whole time. There's a, an hourglass there in the center. Um, the waves of time, this time. This time you're gonna get it, okay? And it's not like everything's gonna be perfect after this situation, but I feel like um, whatever is being drilled into right now for you, 
when, I was going to say if, when you learn to focus your emotional energy to get through this, that lesson is not going to have to come back again. You win. You're going to feel like a million bucks. I feel like this is something that is like a huge weight coming off of you too. This is something that's been weighing on you forever since childhood. Like I said, varying degrees of things that it could be, you guys. But um, yeah, what was that? When you uh, no anything but that. When you get to that point, that's exactly where you need to be. Don't turn away from that, okay? This is your opportunity to, to do the damn thing. And you are being highlighted here with temperance. I love that. That was awesome. You are being highlighted with your card coming through here too. So in the obstacle, your challenge here right now, beyond what we've already talked, beyond just doing it, it's difficult. The oracle. So this is um, the hierophant. Hierophant Oracle is about uh, it. Like what I'm getting is tradition, the way that you've always done something. Maybe you feel whatever your age is at this point, you've gotten through your life to this point, keeping those components of yourself in the shadow. And you may be thinking like, well, why would, why would I do anything about it? I've survived this far, right? Well, is surviving all you want to do? The challenge here, the opportunity, because that's just a different pronunciation of challenge, right? The opportunity here is to spiritually evolve. For some of you, there may be a specific person in the vein of like spirituality or religion that challenges you at this time. Maybe it's a reader on YouTube, I don't know. <laughs> but there's an opportunity here to really spiritually evolve, like a blessing to receive something. I think the difficulty in that is, um, cause I don't even get that it's that you don't feel that you're worthy of that. Well, I feel like on the surface, that's not what you think or you feel anyway. You feel, or you know that you are worthy of something, but when it comes to this component that's in the shadow, you turn away. No, anything but that. <laughs> Whatever that thing is, that makes you feel unworthy. But you are. You are worthy of that blessing. So that's a part of the challenge is just getting to that point of accepting your worth. Okay? Sagittarius. So a Queen of Pentacles comes through here next in your obstacle or challenge. Um, Queen of Pentacles is, uh, I do get this like grounding into earth, just grounding period, maybe difficult right now. Because grounding means that you have to be present. Grounding and being present means that you have to face this, whatever this is. Um, Queen of Pentacles is all about choices, too. She lives an opulent life because she makes the decisions to live that life. Everything she has in her life, she's made the decision to be there. So your challenge right now to receive this blessing, to evolve spiritually, is to make the choice to do so. And that starts with not turning away from this and recognizing the worth of those components that are in your shadow as well, because they are you. So if you feel that you are worthy, which you are, then you have to eventually recognize that those components are also worthy. Okay? Okay. Um, so let's do Animal Spirit Oracle for you guys, and then I'm gonna move into the Extended. If you wanna join me there, links will be in the description of the video. So spirit, what do we have here for Sagittarius? Animal spirit. This is the wild unknown. Animal spirit oracle. What other messages do we have for Sagittarius? My fingers will work. Ooh, I think we got a couple there. <laughs> okay. So, um... Oh, come here, if I can pick this up. So spider and bat are what come through here. Um, I do get, I love that bat comes through. The bat, there's this component of like being able to see in the dark. You're doing the shadow work right now. You are being asked to see what is in the dark. The bat also, there's this um, concept of waiting for the dawn, waiting for the light to come back. They do, they are nocturnal. Um, they do fly by night. But um, what I'm getting is that, well, it's always darkest before the dawn, right? Diving into those depths do not, it does not mean that you're going to be lost there. 
the sun will still rise. It has to. That's the part of the balance. With the two of pentacles, the sun and the moon rotating, right? And this was in your good stuff. I feel like that's also reassurance that this will happen. They will continue to move. Learn to be fluid and flexible and move with that. Okay? Um, so with the spider coming through here, this, I feel, is about choices. The cho Oh, the web we weave, right? The choices we make have an effect. Every cause has an effect. So this is a reminder here to, I'm getting kind of like, um, to trust your instincts. Your instincts is the plan. Can you expand on that a little bit more, Spirit? Because what I'm seeing is like, like your instinct is maybe to dive into the shadow here, but then there's also a protective mechanism that shuts that down. And they're kind of going back and forth. So your instinct here is to like survive, is to take care of yourself, the self here. But the self does not divide. That is not, that is not um, survival. That's not healthy. We are learning, ooh, interesting. For so long, we have had to survive through the group. So these component like sequestering things to the shadow, that comes has come out of necessity uh, because if there was something you were different, in the tribe, in the group, that could mean you don't make it. For many hundreds of years, thousands of years, it's been that way. And we are shifting into a place that is more uh, surviving through the self. And that doesn't mean isolating from others because we aren't islands, we are meant to connect. What this means is it, like exactly what the book was saying on that, the self does not separate does not cleave off and chunk off pieces of itself because it's not judging those components. It is just, these are all me. So this is a time here for you guys to learn how to survive through yourself, to learn what yourself is and to allow all of those colors to come through and radiate. Okay. All right. Sagittarius. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here in the general. I'm going to move into the extended, like I said. If you want to join me, links are in the description. Personal readings are available as well, like I said. Uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe if this reading did resonate with you. I truly appreciate the support. And I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description. If you feel called to donate to the channel, it does go a long way. And thank you so much to those who do support the channel in that way. Uh, in the extended, I am looking at, or we will be looking at, direct messages from your higher self love and advice, career and advice, and then um, what is most likely being manifested for you at this time based on your thoughts and emotions, okay? I love you, Sagittarius. You guys got this. I know you can do it. I'll see you all very soon. Be well.